Alright, so hello, this is the uh, fourth devlog for Slime Sing. Uh, a little bit off schedule, but um, it's been crazy week. Anyway, we'll get into it. So, the uh, what I talked about with the abilities uh, last video was getting it working with uh, multiplayer input, and that has been finished. So, I'll show you it working right now. So. Here, we're just gonna get the controller connected here. Um, all right, so join the keyboard player, connects, and here's the ability that's working dash, jump, dash, jump. Yeah, great. And then uh, movement, everything's working. Then I'll add a controller player. Now I can move independently, which was already established, and I can also dash independently dash independently from each other we can do like another direction like that and we can also jump independently from each other and that is the abilities working I'll talk a bit about how this was executed so I added a new object to act as the uh, trigger for um, triggering the ability it's an ability trigger script and it's a scriptable object and it's held in the ability itself so here I'll go into um, my scripts folder and abilities and we'll take a look at like a like a, an example ability so a dash ability I'll just open that up in the inspector and here you see it's got an ability trigger and instead of any input this is what will actually cause for triggering the action um, that's just I've abstracted it like that made its own sort of uh, responsibility there and so if we go into the ability triggers uh, trigger has takes from ability trigger and also takes from the can also take from ability trigger input and ability trigger like state is just like what state is it at like uh, for the input system it works like it started performed or cancelled so that's just the three states uh, any input can be in for the trigger it started performed or cancelled so if we look at uh, input trigger, we got a dash input trigger here, and it takes a reference to the the uh, input system object, and so this just takes a button reference. So this is a dash button reference, and so that's basically how it works in the design aspect. In terms of it, actually, like the functionality is, we look at the ability is is here um, every time an input is cast we do uh, it's up here is check activation so what this does is it checks if it's performed this is this is the basic one this can be overridden by other stuff for example it's overridden by um, the jump script because I need to get if it's started performed or cancelled but in terms of basic functionality, all I'm considering is if it's performed or not. So here it just set the perform and sets the internal state to cancelled and then starts the ability if it if it's been performed. And there's other logic you can add with the jump ability if it's in here. It's the jump ability effect. Sorry, here I'll hold it for jump ability would be in in here. Uh, jump ability. So here the check activation is switch statement with started perform cancel do some logic and so the ability triggers themselves is they work just like getting any input system how you would with the new unity input system so ability triggers um, here I'll just open up um, so with with uh, the input system you can either have a press or a hold so I use the hold for jumping because based on how long you hold it is how high you jump and so I have the simple one where it just takes a press so the simple one I have if it's started, it sends, it takes the ability that is passed in um, on start and passes it its state and then this will perform the activation check. So this will also perform the activation check. All simple stuff. Um, the, the hold interaction is a bit different because it returns every single, like it started here, it's performed, it's cancelled, whatnot. Uh, so that's basically how the triggers work and the reason for the triggers is I also also like so for example I want would want a sword 
to be an ability user. So like I want swords to do like different attacks, like a spin attack or something like that. For example, uh, I'd want like the swords themselves to be used ability users. And I'm also planning to have like sort of a single player co-op campaign, hopefully. Um, like obviously it's an extension to the base game um, where I'll have AI and that AI will will also be ability users because they will be using like abilities for example like let's say one will teleport and one will uh, like like shoot something um, so th in that case like I can just make it an ability user and then I could add its own abilities but the the, the triggers wouldn't be through input it would be through actually logic in the the AI itself so that way I don't really have to change any like scripts at all I can just like extend it and this follows like like obviously I'm following solid design patterns with this as best I can so just open and close principle and single responsibility is what I'm hitting at here so yeah that's it for the fourth devlog for Samsung and uh, yep yeah, that's it